method. This is, they call it tensor. Okay. Um, the difference between tensor and, and uh, matrix, the difference is that tensors, the values are going to depend on the or are going to depend on the orientation of the coordinate system. So if you rotate the coordinate system, the values of stress are going to change. So that's why we call we have this special name for this type of matrices, matrices that depend on um, coordinate system. So they transform. Once you can change the coordinate system, they transform. So um, tensor, you can think of it basically a stress, you know, a stress matrix. All right. So I talked in class that how we uh, lay out this matrix is as follows. You will have on the diameter diagonal elements will be sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. Here you have tau yx, tau uh, zx, tau zy. Here you have tau xy, tau xz, tau yz. So uh, you guys know that this matrix is going to be symmetric. So this element here uh, the lower triangular part of the element, uh, the, the matrix is going to be equal to the upper triangle. So you have uh, this matrix will be symmetric. Okay. So once you put your stresses into this form, into this matrix, you can find eigenvalues and eigenvectors to find your principal stresses and principal axes. So let's look at our problem again. I have sigma x zero. I have tau xy at 7.96, here is 20. For sigma y, I have 8.84, and then I have it here. So let's put it in this formula. Sigma x is 0, sigma y is 8.84, sigma z is 0, right? Because it's a plane stress condition, but right. Note that this approach not limited to 3D coordinates. The plane stress is going to change the condition. So it's applicable to all 3D uh, stress cases. All right. So uh, what is tau xy? It's positive 7.96. You have to be careful again because um, for this case, matrix, operation is similar to formulas we have, transformation formulas. Tau xy is positive if your tau agrees with your y axis. So if it's, it's negative, then it disagrees. It's like opposite direction. So for this one, it's going to be positive. And then um, tau xy is this. Tau xz is 0 because it's plane stress condition. And you know for this problem, anything related to z is 0. All right, so this is symmetric. So these two guys are going to be zero too. Here, this element basically is going to be equal to this because of, as I said, matrix, stress matrix, it's going to be symmetric. Similar thing we can say about, um, about the strain tensor or matrix. All right, um, we have this. Now let's see what, how we can find uh, eigenvalues. To do that, um, we learned in, um, in, our, in linear algebra that if you want to find matrix A, eigenvalues of matrix A, you have to solve this problem. This is determinant of matrix A minus lambda times identical matrix. From here, you will find lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So you're taking determinant here. It's going to give you equation, a third degree equation. Uh, polynomial. It's going to have three roots. The roots are going to be your eigenvalue. And, you know, you probably learned how to find uh, eigenvalue, eigenvectors also, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that here because it's kind of off topic here. And I'm going to show you how you can use your calculator to do that. All right. So let me uh, zoom in on my calculator. See if I can have better um, picture. So let me turn off my light and my alert. Okay, 
So let's put that next to things to our um, into our calculator and find the eigen values. Okay, so to do that, my calculator is built in entire CAD. Well, you have similar programs in your and other um, other calculators. Okay, so we'll go down. Advanced, you have to go to advanced function, advanced menu. All right, so eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So I'm going to use eigenvalues now. So here you need to define your uh, metrics now. So I go here, create a Three by three metric. Okay, so the elements are zero, seven point nine six, seven point nine six, eight point eight four. Okay, I'm sorry, I think I miscalled something here. Zero, 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 and zero. All right, so eigenvalues, and eigen, eigenvalues, I'm sorry, are gonna be, you see, negative 4.68, which is one of my principal uh, stresses I found, 3.52, and the other one, zero, the zero you see is because um, because you have planar stress conditions, so sigma z was zero, which is basically one of my principal stresses. You see that they are not ordered, um, so um, you have to order it yourself. So looking at these numbers, again, as I had before, sigma one t, the largest one, is uh, 13.52, sigma 2t is zero, sigma 3t negative 4.68. All of them are important, all right? So next question is, what would be my eigenvectors? Let's see, how can I do that? Um, kind of still novice with using Craigslist instrument calculators. When I was a student, I used to have a calculate where you let's see how can I substitute this uh, with this. Go up here, and there's odd one. Advanced metrics, I think so. Let's see. Okay, and then eigenvectors five. All right, so eigenvectors now. Um, let's see how can I. Let me do it this one way. Okay, this is like kind of my answer. So maybe if I, uh, maybe if I just. was Z, and then I can vector five. Okay, if I put here and let's see how it's gonna be. Okay, these are gonna be my eigen vectors. All right. So let's see how this looks like. First of all, the last one, which is. Uh, Related to the zero one, the zero um, principal stress. The last vector 
is uh, corresponds to my z axis. My third principle, uh, my you know my uh, principal stress on z axis equals zero, and that tells me that actually z axis itself. You see the last column, z axis axis itself is one of your principal axes, which makes sense because I know on z direction I had zero stress sigma z and no shear stress on it. So if there is no shear stress on a plane, it means that that plane itself is a principal stress. Uh, principal, I'm sorry, that plane is principal plane. So no matter, um, as long as your shear stresses are zero on a plane, that plane is principal plane. And axis perpendicular to that plane is your principal axis. All right. So Z axis is one of my principal axes. And the other two are given using these two vectors. The order, if you remember when we found the uh, eigenvalues, um, the order they, appe they appear, eigenvalues appear, the eigenvectors vectors corresponding or associated eigenvectors appear in the same order. So first column is, if I go to which one is here first, eigenvalues, you see negative 4.5. 68 appears first. So that one, the first vector corresponds to that. Second one is for the other one, the 13.52. And then the last one is for the third principal stress, which was along z axis sigma z. So one other thing I want you guys to notice here, these three vectors, you guys remember principal axis are always uh, perpendicular to each other. Look at these three vectors, these three vectors, if you consider them two by two, they are perpendicular to each other. That makes sense, right? Because principal axes uh, must be perpendicular to each other. So uh, this is a something good, good thing to note, pay attention to. That makes sense. So um, if you want to plot that, so one of my principal axes is uh, z axis. And on the plane of x and y, I'm going to have two other principal axes. So let me write down a 6, 2, and then 0, 7, 0, negative 5, x, and here negative 8, 8, 6, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. All right, I think the note right. Okay, I, I have them here, the eigenvectors, which are gonna show me, they're showing actually my uh, principal axis. So uh, these two guys, as I said, um, are in plane X and Y. All right, so the way you can find it, this shows my orientation, so let's see. If this is my x and y uh, coordinates, the first one, the orientation of first principal axis. And this one is associated with negative 4.68 stress. This one was 13.5. And as I said, this one is associated with zero. All right, so let's find this one, orientation of this one. This means that um, we have to go in x direction um, X is negative, is like this, and then Y is positive. All right, so this will be orientation of one of my principal axes. The other one, basically, it's going to be perpendicular to that, right? So the other one is going to be like that. I don't need to look at the coordinate. Actually, I can say, you know what, perpendicular to that. But if you look at the coordinate, actually, it says that the other one is negative 0.5 and then comes down negative 8.6 enlarge it so this is my second one so the orientation of the second one is going to be like that this is my first one this is my second one or you could use the approach i showed in class uh, to find the slope right how to find the slope if you remember how the, uh, I, the way i did it in class you have this length, um, 
is okay, this one is going to be eight eight two. This one is r six seven. If you divide this by that and then find r tangent, you can find this split this angle here. And for this one, um, is this one is 0.5, this one is 0.5, this one is 0.5. All right, so this is going to be your centripetal um, orientation principle axis. Uh, by the way, okay, the, this one, as I said, was uh, associated with this one, negative 4. So this is associated with sigma p of negative 4.68. This one is associated to associated with sigma p of 13.56. All right. So this is orientation principle axis which you use metric operation. Most of the times you are not interested in uh, the direction of the axis, orientation or direction. You are just interested in uh, you are interested in the values of principal stresses because that's the value the these principal stresses you will use them to find r um, to find or to figure out uh, whether we have whether or not we have failure all right i hope this video will help you guys um i um i have another video courses for you uh, given by different uh, professors that one was more advanced I hope uh, you enjoyed that one too.